team and everything like that, and a great servant to the NBA uh, world as well, too. So um, with that, let's go ahead and get back to football. All right. It, uh, we got the um, – Seahawks and the Bengals. The Seahawks come in here at three and one. The Bengals are two and three. The Bengals are a two and a half point favor over under 46 as well, too. And I feel like the Bengals, you get yourself an easy one, and then you got to come back to Cincinnati and get, play against uh, a tough team, a hard one. It seems like nobody's saying this, but the Bengals probably had one of the tougher schedules to start the season. Come on. You got the Browns in Cleveland. You have. Um, you had the Ravens week two who had revenge on their mind. Then week three, you had a kind of a gimme game with the Rams, in a sense, because he was on Monday Night Football. Then you twist back around. You got to play a tough Titans team at home. The Titans are a tough home team. And then you, you got to go and play the Cardinals, who seem to be a good little scrappy team. They might not beat you, but they're going to make you work for your win. And now they got to get Seattle this week. So I would say that pound for pound, first six weeks of the season, this is making the uh, Bengals a lot more tougher than, um, you know, a lot of people uh, felt that, um, you know, a lot more tougher than um, a lot of people probably thought that it would be. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, this just really molds and shapes a champion as well, too. You got to have it hard in the beginning sometimes for you to have the, the, the beauty in the end. And I think that, the Bengals have had a great example of that over the last few years. The Bengals have been slow starters the last few seasons. And now, you know, they had to get themselves a get over game. And that's exactly what happened there. Now you got a team in the um you got a team in the Seahawks who are fresh off of a um bye. They're three and one. They've won their last three games in a row. They've really played some pretty good football. And we could keep it real that this team kind of is another team that kind of got the 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 good just of the schedule as well, too. I know you had the Rams opening week. We all got popped in that game. That was an upset somewhat. And then week two, you know what? They they went to Detroit and beat now who is America's team, the Lions. And then the last two weeks, you could really say, you know what? Those were some games that you you know you were supposed to win, especially that Panthers game. So you know, the Seahawks, all in all, they they are about to get tested by their best matchup this season, straight up. They haven't played anybody as good as the Bengals this year at all. And we know that coming into this game that you have every advantage going to the Bengals. The Bengals have the better quarterback. The Bengals have the better receivers, um, even though that's, that's slightly just a, a, a little bit better. But we know that Jamar Chase kind of cancels out the two – um young receivers that the Seahawks have but one thing I will say that the Seahawks ha have that the um Bengals don't have coming into this game an awesome awesome cornerback uh room dude because these guys those guys are special seriously Witherspoon um Woolton um these guys are real real ballers and I think that they're better than what Sherman and uh Brown as Sherman and uh Browner uh were when they were there and Sherman and Browner were a to me, probably of the last 25 years, the best uh, cornerback duo there is. And then you you add, line up those safeties in the back with Chancellor and with Earl, man, you still just get so many, like, damn, Legion of Boom was one of the best. And I think that this group can be better. That's how crazy it is with this group right now because they got Jamal Adams still in that defensive backfield. So that's where I think they can really nullify the Bengals in this game. I know the Bengals feel like they just uh, have started their groove. They're about to start moving. They're about to start uh, getting back into playing that good Bengals football that we've seen over the last three years. But I truly do feel that what happens in this spot right here is that you get a Seahawks team that is going to be ready for whatever. But – I think when it comes down to it, the Bengals will figure out a way to win this game. I'm taking them with the minus 150. I think they win this game by a final kick. It's going to be probably one of the best games of the week, to just be honest with you. It's one of the best matchups, and I think it will end up being one of the best games as well, too. You know, um, one, two, three, four. Um, on paper, you know, your first instinct, Joe, and I, I thought that was the best play of the week last week. Good bounce back spot, played the money line. Uh, with the Bengals now you think they're back and you know quietly Seattle coming off a bye and, and which is a scary thought my true number was 
Bengals minus a hook with a 41. They're up to three at most sports books with a 45 and a half. People are thinking a lot of points to be scored in this one. First one to 24 or 27 will win this game. Joe's for offensive line is still banged up. Seattle will put a lot, a lot of pressure on them. Uh, Gino would have to win the turnover battle. Uh, they'd have to control the ball uh, with their running game with Kenneth Walker and Mr. Charbonnet. Um, will T. Higgins play? I don't know. If not, insert Tyler Boyd. I like Joe and company to keep it rolling. I, too, took the money line, minus 150. Close game, great game at 1 o'clock. Uh, again, I'll go on record here. First one to 27 wins, and that will be the Bengals, Bob's. All right, sounds good. I love it. It's gonna, it should be a great game between the AFC uh, North and the NFC West. So um, let's go ahead and jump into our next.